um, in Washington today. Today, the big news was that the president's eldest son and his namesake had to testify to Congress today about the Trump-Russia investigation and specifically about his own Russia contacts during the presidential campaign. Don Jr.'s discussions with the Judiciary Committee today lasted over five hours. It was all held behind closed doors. We don't have any footage to show you of him giving that testimony, but uh, we did ultimately today get a copy of his formal opening statement so we know uh, what he and his lawyers prepared for him to tell the committee before they started questioning him. Uh, we also know a few details of how it went. He was not asked to swear an oath. Uh, before he testified, but of course, whether or not you are formally sworn in under oath, you still have to tell the truth. Uh, we know that a transcript was made of Trump's testimony today, but it will be up to the committee as to whether or not they ever released that transcript. Hypothetically, the transcript could also be released to the special counsel's office, to Robert Mueller's office, depending on if he wanted to see it and depending on what could be worked out between the committee and Robert Mueller and Donald Trump Jr.'s own lawyers. Uh, we also know that this might have been today the prelude to a second appearance by Donald Trump Jr. at an open hearing, particularly if senators didn't like what they heard from him today. And today, Donald Trump Jr. was questioned only by committee staff. Senators on the committee were allowed to sit in and watch and listen, but the senators themselves were not allowed to interrupt or ask their own questions. According to NBC News reporting today, these are the senators who bothered to sit in on Donald Trump Jr.'s testimony today. Uh, Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut, uh, Chris Coons of Delaware, Dick Durbin of Illinois, Amy Klobuchar from Minnesota, and Sheldon Whitehouse from Rhode Island. Uh, we're also told that Senator Al Franken of Minnesota stepped in, but only for about three minutes. We're told that Utah Senator Orrin Hatch came by for about five minutes. If you're doing the partisan math, that does mean there was only one Republican senator there today for a total of five minutes, while the president's son testified for over five hours. As, as for the senators who did show up, we don't know exactly what they heard, but we do know how one of those Democratic senators responded to Donald Trump Jr.'s testimony today. Uh, very shortly, about an hour after Trump's testimony wrapped up, the office of Delaware Senator Chris Coons sent out this memo. I see two interested parties from the office of Senator Chris Coons. Re Donald Trump Jr. testimony today. And then it says, summary. Below is a statute to keep in mind in regards to Donald Trump Jr.'s testimony today. And then they just posted the entire U.S. federal statute that makes it a crime to lie to Congress. <laughs> and then this is a lot of things, but subtle is not one of them. We don't know what Senator Coons was, was hinting Donald Trump Jr. may have lied about today. We called to ask the senator today, and we haven't yet heard back from his office. But here's the next big shoe that dropped on this story today. The AP and CNN both reported today that one of the things Donald Trump Jr. told the Senate is that he doesn't recall anything about the White House or the president himself being involved in crafting the first statement that was written about why Donald Jr. went to a meeting with a whole bunch of Russians last June at Trump Tower, along with Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort. Quote, Donald Trump Jr. told Senate Judiciary Committee staffers today that he did not recall the details of White House involvement in the public response to his 2016 meeting with a Russian lawyer. Quote, he told the committee he did not know much about the Air Force One meeting that allegedly led to the production of his statement. Now, that mysterious top-level meeting between the top of the Trump campaign and Russians connected to Russian intelligence and the Kremlin, that Trump Tower meeting last June, we first learned about that from press reports while the president and basically everybody who works at the White House was in Europe for the G20 meeting. I remember reporting at the time of the G20 that there was going to be nobody left to answer the phone at the White House because they took freaking everybody on that trip to Europe. And then the Washington Post later reported that on Air Force One, on the way home from that G20 trip, that's when the president personally wrote the statement that was released in his son's name about what happened at that Trump Tower meeting with all the Russians. This was the statement that said, uh, it was a short introductory meeting. I asked Jared and Paul to stop by. We primarily discussed a program about the adoption of Russian children that was active and popular with American families years ago and was since ended by the Russian government. 
That was the statement that was reportedly drafted on Air Force One by the president on the way home from the G20 summit after the news broke about the, the, the Trump Tower meeting. Now, that statement was seriously, seriously misleading, even just on its face. There is no program about the adoption of Russian children. There isn't that. That doesn't exist. I mean, quite the opposite. Putin cut off the ability of Americans to adopt Russian kids as payback for us putting sanctions on Russia. That's as close as you can get to the program that was active and popular with American families. So even just on its face, it's misleading. The other reason that statement was misleading is because Donald Jr. soon released the emails that led up to that Trump Tower meeting where the subject line over and over again said nothing about adoptions. This was the subject line. Russia, Clinton, private and confidential. And the purpose of that meeting was laid out in comically blunt terms. Good morning. Emin just called and asked me to contact you with something very interesting. The Crown Prosecutor of Russia met with his father, Eris, this morning, and in their meeting offered to provide the Trump campaign with some official documents and information that would incriminate Hillary and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to your father. This is obviously very high-level and sensitive information, but it is part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump, helped along by Eris and Emin. So that was the Trump Tower meeting. This statement saying that Trump Tower meeting was a meeting of, what was it? A meeting about the program about the adoption of Russian children. The statement was just bull. And that false statement was put out in the name of Donald Trump Jr., but the Washington Post later reported the statement was actually dictated by the president himself. And then the White House confirmed the president's involvement in that statement, saying the president weighed in as any father would. Well, now, Here's the rub. Before Donald Trump Jr. was even done testifying to the Senate today, CNN broke the news that the special counsel, Robert Mueller, is now seeking interviews with White House staff. White House staff specifically who were aboard Air Force One when the initial misleading statement about the Trump Tower meeting was crafted. Mueller reportedly wants to know how the statement aboard Air Force One was put together, whether information was intentionally left out, and who was involved. Mueller's questions could go to the issue of intent and possible efforts to conceal information during an obstruction of justice investigation. Mueller considers some of the aides aboard Air Force One who helped craft the statement to be witnesses. So we know because of the emails that Donald Trump Jr. released about the Trump Tower meeting. We know that the meeting was intended to try to get dirt on Hillary Clinton from the Russian government to use against her in the presidential campaign. That's what we know from the emails that set up the meeting. That was actually corroborated in the opening statement that Donald Trump Jr. made to the Senate today, under pain of imprisonment if he lied. That was the purpose of the meeting, to get dirt on Hillary Clinton from the Russian government. That is no longer a controversial assertion. That is given. That's attested to proven by the written documentation they put out and attested to by the statement that Donald Trump Jr. today made under pain of imprisonment. It was to get dirt on Clinton from the Russians. So putting out a statement that said the meeting was about something else entirely? Well, that's obviously mendacious, right? But is it, is it, is it criminal? Are you in trouble if you put out a statement saying that meeting was about something it totally wasn't about? I mean, it seems clear from the conceded facts that the president was personally involved in concocting a statement about that meeting that attempted to disguise the true nature and purpose of the Trump Tower meeting, to make it seem like something other than his campaign seeking Russian government assistance for their efforts against Hillary Clinton in the presidential campaign. If that statement, that effort to cover up the purpose of that meeting is now the subject for the special counsel's inquiry, and he's gonna interview White House staff who may have witnessed that act? A, that's really bad news for the president. And B, that means the special counsel has a veritable poo-poo platter of similar cover-up efforts to run to ground. If that's gonna be the stuff he's running to ground, if that's what he's investigating, efforts to mislead the public about contacts with Russians, there's a lot to choose from. 
if that's what the special counsel is going to be running to ground, if there's potential criminal liability who made the, for people who made those misstatements. I mean, there are a lot of misleading the public, creating a false pretext type statements that have been made about Russia by members of the Trump campaign and the Trump administration. A lot of them. I mean, just, just take the, the people in the Trump campaign and the Trump administration who insisted publicly that there had been no contacts between the Trump campaign and Russians during the presidential contest. And we now know there were. I mean, Paul Manafort said that publicly. Kellyanne Conway said that publicly. Hope Hicks said that publicly. Donald Trump Jr. said that publicly. Attorney General Jeff Sessions said that publicly, under oath. Vice President Mike Pence said that publicly. I mean, actually, you know what? Just take Pence alone here. Mike Pence did bluntly assert multiple times that there had been no contacts between the Trump campaign and Russians during the campaign. That was false. Mike Pence bluntly asserted that Trump National Security Advisor Mike Flynn had never talked to the Russians about sanctions. That was false. Mike Pence bluntly asserted that he had no idea Mike Flynn had foreign business ties, even though Pence was running the transition when the transition was notified multiple times, including in writing and in person by Flynn's lawyers, that yeah, Flynn had foreign business ties. Mike Pence bluntly asserted that the president fired FBI Director James Comey because the president got a recommendation to do so from the Justice Department. We now know that Vice President Pence received a letter from the president outlining exactly why he wanted to fire James Comey a day before the Justice Department even wrote that recommendation. And that's literally just the stuff we know about the vice president in terms of the lies that we know he has told specifically about Russia. And that's just the ones I can come up with off the top of my head. Give me a few days and I could give you quite a list. I mean, if this CNN report today is right, I mean, I know there's a lot going on right now. And I, the testimony of the president's son is itself such an incredible spectacle in the history of presidential scandal, right? And this is competing with a lot of other really important national news in the country right now. But this is potentially a very big deal. If this CNN report today is right, and the special counsel who has the ability to prosecute crimes, right? If the special counsel is now investigating administration officials for making misleading statements about ties to Russia, well, yeah, that Donald Trump senior and junior statement lying about the purpose of the Trump Tower meeting with all the Russians, that's probably a pretty good place to start. But if the special counsel sees it as in his remit to chase down people in the administration or in the campaign who created false pretexts for the administration's actions around Russia, or who lied about contacts with Russia, or who told tall tales to the public to disguise or distract from Trump contacts with Russia or behavior toward Russians. Well, if that's what he's investigating, that investigatory road is gonna be a very long one. And a lot of people in the administration, up to and including the White House communications staff and senior advisors to the president and the vice president himself and the president's family members, they're all going to need good lawyers if Robert Mueller is going to start nailing people for that. And just to, to underscore the seriousness of this, let me, let me just close here with just one more point to underscore the seriousness of what they are facing right now. Just keep this in mind. Donald Trump's eldest son and namesake, Donald Trump Jr., still today was disclosing new contacts between the Trump campaign and the Russians that happened during the campaign. Still today, we got new stuff. Today, Donald Trump Jr., according to the statement that he made to the Judiciary Committee, today he revealed three new previously undisclosed phone calls that he had with Emin Agalarov. Emin Agalarov is described in the email setting up that meeting as one of two people who are helping along Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump in his presidential campaign against Hillary Clinton. You had three phone calls with him that you never disclosed before today? Even today, this key figure from the Trump campaign, Trump's eldest son, is disclosing three new calls with that person who he knew and was told explicitly was helping out the Russian government in their efforts to help Trump win the election. Today, we're still getting those new disclosures. What else have they still not copped to if they're still disclosing new contacts with the Russian government today? As for Trump Jr., he told the Judiciary Committee today he doesn't recall the content of any of those calls, but they will find them in his phone records. Stay tuned. 
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.